In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a form handler and connect it to an Elementor form. So the principles I'm going to walk through can be applied to a lot of different forms. I'm just happen to be using Elementor because that's what we use on our own site. But if you're using a different form builder, a different website, there's going to be a lot of similarities when you want to take that form and that form's data and connect it to a Pardot form handler. So in this tutorial, I'll do my best to point out what's specific to an Elementor form and then what's more universal when you're looking at you know, any other sort of form that you might want to connect to a form handler. So let's start by actually creating the form handler and then we'll create the form in Elementor and connect the two. So in Pardot, navigate to the content tab and go to form handlers and create a new form handler. I'm going to call this Elementor contact us. We'll just pretend that this is a contact us form, but it could be a lead form or a quiz or anything like that. Go ahead and put it in a folder and choose the appropriate campaign. Then you can also set a success location if you have a thank you page that's been set up. I'm going to choose a specific URL and write in our homepage. I'm just doing this so that we can see that it was successful when we get redirected to the home page. If it's not successful, the error location is going to be the referring URL. So it'll just send us back to the page that has the form on it. Now, typically you don't want to send somebody to just your home page when they submit a form, you'd want to send them to a thank you page, some sort of confirmation. Completion actions, I'm going to skip this for now, but of course it's a powerful tool within Pardot for moving people around your campaigns. And then at the bottom here, we've got form fields. So the first field that's already added for us is email. That is required to submit any form into Pardot. It applies to form handlers as well. So you can see it's got a little R next to it for it being required. Now let's add a couple additional fields. We'll do first for first name here. And I'm going to make this not required because if the date is missing, it will error out the form handler and it won't get submitted. And I'd rather have some data than no data at all. I'm going to put last for our last name here. And then I'll add another field for comments. And we can use our comments field. There we go. Now pay attention to the external field name. Here I've used email first, last, and comments as my external field names. You could use anything you want here. So sometimes it will be, you know, F name or first dash name as that external field name. The important thing is that this value matches the field name that's being sent to us from the form that we're about to build. Then click Create Form Handler and make note of the endpoint URL here. We're going to use this in just a second. So let's go over to Elementor. I've got a page here where I've, I've added a Elementor form. These are really useful because you can create multiple steps within just one form, which is really hard to do with Pardot. And you've got a lot of control over the design and the feel of these forms. So here's the one that's pretty simple. I've added the fields already for first, last email and comments. Now, when you're adding these fields, pay attention to the advanced tab and the ID and the short code for that particular field. You can change this ID to be a little bit more readable if you want, but it's not necessary. The thing that's really important here is actually that short code, which we're going to use in just a second. So we've got our form and our different fields and what we want to do is redirect the person when they submit this form. We want to redirect them to the form handler endpoint URL with the values of these fields in the URL as parameters so that Pardot can catch it and then redirect them from that point on to that thank you page, or in this case, our homepage. To do that, scroll down and select actions after submit. Hit the little plus sign and you'll see that there's an action here called redirect. There it is. When you choose redirect, the redirect settings panel shows up underneath it. Select that. And right here is where you want to paste in that action URL from the form handler. So let's go back to the form handler. Always choose HTTPS for this. Go ahead and copy that URL. We'll come back to Elementor and paste that in here. So we've got the redirect going. They're going to get redirected where we want, but currently it's not passing any of the data from the form into that URL. So we need that in the form of parameters. The first thing to do is add a question mark at the end of that endpoint URL. That's gonna start our parameters. And then write your first field external name. So our first one, we'll just do email and then set equals. And then what we need to do is to get essentially the merge field for the value of email. And we can see that under form fields, click into email, click into advanced, and there it is. It's this short code right here. So the system is going to turn that short code into the value that they submitted in the email field when they get redirected. So come down to the redirect and paste in that short code. So there we go. Question mark, 
email equals, and then our short code. Let's add another one after it by using an ampersand, and then we'll put in first. So first equals, come back to our fields here, advanced, and copy that short code. There we go. To add more, just add another ampersand and then repeat the pattern. I'm going to leave that for now. I, I think that's enough to demonstrate. Click update, and then we can test it. I'm just going to put in my first name and my email address. Last name and comments don't really matter because I didn't include them yet in that URL redirect, so they wouldn't get captured anyways. Then once you've added your values to the fields, go ahead and click the send button. That's going to submit the form. That's going to then redirect us to Pardot, which should also forward us on from there to the homepage, which it has. And if we come back into Pardot and hit refresh, you should see a prospect record show up underneath that form handler. And there's the prospect, Mr. Test Hayes. So overall, it's not too difficult. As long as you know what the endpoint URL is, you know what that external field name is, and you understand that in Elementor, you got to use the short code for those fields in the form, then you're good to go. You just put those together and they'll redirect on submission and you'll be capturing that data into Pardot. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to learn Pardot faster, take a look at our courses at academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.